It's Thursday. It's sunny, but it's cold. This is Every Trade Behind the Build, episode 15. So welcome back to an end of the week edition of Every Trade Behind the Build. The uh, last video went out, really nice comments. People seem to like the varied content, so that is what we're gonna stick to. And there's a little bit of everything in this episode. If you like building work, we've got a bit of that. If you like behind the scenes business side, we've got a bit of that. If you like property development and you're interested in getting to that, we've got some of that. So stay tuned right to the end because we've scattered the content throughout the week. I'm gonna ask a little favor again. I'm gonna be bold and ask for 950 likes this week. So please, all you gotta do is just click that like thing for us because it helps us grow the channel and then gives us more encouragement to make the content and put it out there. Also, it's absolutely free. And if you're not subscribed, please just click subscribe. Literally 10% of viewers are subscribed. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Big, busy end to the week. Let's have it. So let's start. I'm downstairs in the workshop and we've got this crew cab transit in for a new clutch. This was a subscriber's uh, vehicle who uh, got in touch. We managed to recover it for him. Well, I say recover, the lads had to push it in. It was ridiculous because it was only down the road. We've got it in. Dale has actually swapped the clutch out. We've had it for 24 hours. It's ready for him to go back and get it and put it back to work. Um, this side of the business is thriving to the point now where I'm thinking and I've been speaking to Alex about what we do next, whether we take more people on, get more space. We really have sort of made it work down here. It's not really big enough, especially for stuff this big. Uh, Dale's really got like hunched back on his back and he, we can't quite get it up high enough, but we'll keep monitoring it and we'll keep reviewing it, but keep the work coming in because the work keeps coming in, then we can afford to make more investment and we're gonna bring that investment to you on the channel. So yeah, this one, Dale's just about to go and road test it and then back to the customer, happy days. Over at one of our extension projects, the Britlayers, Adam and Steve, the mm, Laurel and Hardy of Britlaying are cracking on. So the Starsky and Hutch of Brit Lane are smashing it there. I say it every week, but we're lucky to have them and they're a great team. If you find them on your extension, you're in very safe hands. So over in Liverpool, we've got so much content we want to bring you, but Hollywood and I just can't get there enough. So we've recruited another videographer. Because the channel is flying, we're putting our money where our mouths are and having two videographers on the episodes now. So. Over to my Liverpool co-host, Mr. Alex Riddick, my business partner, my brother in arms, to see what's happening over at Preferred Joinery. So we're in Preferred joining me today um, and you can see here we've got this American uh, white ash job going out. This is for a school classroom so it's, uh, if you can imagine a big school classroom the idea behind it is you want to split it into three sections to try and utilise the space more. Go on Craig, you can carry on. Um, and we're building these partitions, um, door going in the middle, the double door, uh, tough and glass going in between and there's three sets of them which are getting ready to go out. 
Craig's just machine in the last week now to go inside. Um, and who's been doing these, Rich? Uh, I've been doing a few. Craig's been sanding the doors. Um, and the, Mick had a little go up there. Uh, and Devil made the doors as well. Yeah, so you can see it's a nice nice finish. The, uh, the white ash compared to others. Most schools want white ash going in for some reason. And probably other people don't know why, but um, they specified white ash. Um, but it'll be nice, I think they're actually going to varnish them up. Uh, but we're delivering them the way they are. Uh, they're going to fit, we're fitting them as well. So we might be able to get some footage of that for you and show you that. You can see as well, our new signs now up as well, which is our little market and wall. Um, the idea is to paint this right the way through um, in the end, but because it's so busy, it's hard trying to make time for it. But we've just done this section for now so that we can put our finished products on. Um, and it's nice seeing the sign up, 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 up on show. So the brief that we were sent for this job is that. This is a photo of a classroom with a consistent one done. That's only a single door, but we've done a double door on this. Uh, and you can see it's been with a nice finished oil on it. Um, and I look good once it's been fitted that. Really good. So um, the job that you'll see that Devo's been machining out down there, which is doing the meeting rails for, you can see from this example here with this sash window, um, that's already been made. In the corner over there, you've got all the boxes, Rich, yeah? <laughs> yeah, they're the boxes, they're the full boxes what the sashes go into. Uh, they're up there ready to get knocked up. So, Devil up there is just machining all the meeting rails yeah. for, the, for the sashes. So, he'll, he'll start knocking the sashes up ready for them boxes. Yeah. Because the boxes will get knocked up tomorrow. And it's all ready hardwood to peel, isn't it? All hardwood to peel, yeah. Yeah, yeah which uh, is um, the best way to do it, really, in terms of like rather than using softwood. Uh, last Last, last a lot longer, longer yeah. A bit more expensive, but the better it's way to do it. in the long run, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you can see over there, we'll show you in a minute on the camera what they look like when you come through. It's all mortars and tenon jointed as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Again, that's that job that's come through. Um, all the hardwood tools, the styles, uh, getting ready to be made into the boxes. Um, that's where Devo's doing the meeting rails. We can form all the sashes that sit in the box. Um, still new, all this for me, so obviously, I. I don't know how to build a timber sash window, uh, so seeing things coming through and picking things up as they come through, picking up terminology for certain things, um, and watching it come through and how they do it. Um, and to be honest with you, it's quite intricate, especially when you're doing everything by hand, which is something that we're looking to in invest in, which is uh, machinery. So on the back end of this week, um, me and Chris are going to uh, see a company that manufactures CNC machines for jointly making companies. Um, so we're going to try and film that for you and show you what we get up to and we're going to see but we want to try and get you don't want to get a three axis or a five axis CNC machine and the same machine can do multiple things it can do sash windows, staircases, doors um, and it's something that we're trying to put in here but because we're tight for space we're trying to do a deal with next door to try and get that and move the fact that side of the factory into there keep this as it is the assembly section uh, but put the CNC in there and it will enable us to turn out more jobs a little bit quicker uh, make our prices more competitive um, and in, you know in, in, increase the workflow and increase the workforce so now we're done in the factory there and prefer a nice little update for you uh, we're just going to head over to two jobs that we've done in the city centre that preferred did a couple of years back and with preferred being how it's been done over the past couple of years none of the works ever been documented and we've done some brilliant jobs over the years so we're slowly going to start bringing them out so people can see and we can showcase what the company can do. Um, so these two jobs, one's like a big restaurant on the corner and then it's got a couple of Airbnbs running down the side and we replaced all the sash windows, all new front doors on them. And then there's another one around the corner which is called the Brunch Club. Uh, so it's a full shop front that we've built. Um, so we're going to head over there, show you that and you can have a little look what it looks like.
it's amazing seeing preferred joinery uh, come together and it's getting so busy. Thanks a lot to you subscribers that are actually um, getting in contact and uh, booking out work, it's, it's brilliant. Use my name and I'll make sure that you get as best service as possible because it's a busy little company and the lead times are a bit longer than we probably want them to be. But as Alex has said, we're working on that. Tomorrow, we're going to see some CNC machines in action and we might even make another purchase. You're not really seeing the office from uh, this angle, have you? Um, this is our uh, big plotter with the uh, architectural business that we run. This comes in quite handy. We can print big drawings and uh, pass them out back to customers and some of the guys in sight who eyesight is not that good, but yeah. That's the day done. See you tomorrow for a little road trip. Good morning. It's Friday. I nearly said I'm on the road, but I'm not going to say that. But I'm in my car and I am driving on the road and we're heading towards a CNC trade fair, which I appreciate probably does not sound that exciting. However, as you saw yesterday, Alex and I have got big plans for preferred joinery and the next step now is to add machinery because skilled labour uh, is hard to find and also if you can have a machine doing what a human can do and that is the way of the world now, you're, um, you're only going to be more efficient and our pain point there at preferred is cutting the materials to size and uh, if we can get a CNC machine, which essentially means we'll do a drawing, pro put the program into the machine and it'll spit out what we need, it's gonna save a lot of time, a lot of man hours, a lot of man hours that we just haven't got. There is a space issue as Alex discussed, um, but we've hopefully got a plan for that, so we're on the way. So, the elephant in the room. I've been doing this YouTube now for what, I think about, nearly two months maybe just over two months actually and I'm loving it it's great and I'm trying my hardest to not appear to be like Mr. Louisey and to be honest there's nothing wrong with being like him because as I've said in the very first episode I think in the first two minutes of the first episode he I think he's really sort of defined this sort of construction content genre particularly in the UK but if we're honest there's been a lot of people come before him I used to watch um, my mate Stu Compton best bricky for years learn a lot from him um, also Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder there's people been putting out construction based content for years um, and I think if Daniel was honest he has been influenced by people uh, I think we've all been influenced by Heavy D Sparks in America, just that kind of genre. But vlogging's been around since I was in high school, so it's not a new thing. However, in the comments, I wouldn't say I've been getting hate, but I've been getting a lot of um, constructive criticism, shall we say, that I'm trying to be like Asheville. I am stealing ideas from Asheville. I need to be more original. Now, again, I said in the very first episode of this i wasn't even sure if i'd make more than one is that i don't want to appear to be the poor man's Asheville. i am someone that's been in business for 15 years next month i have owned this company uh, since april 2009 when we started um, i've built it up from nothing out of my spare bedroom with a lot of amazing people along the way and i've got my own story and it's there's probably a lot of similarities to you guys and how you got started and there'll be a lot of similarities to Daniel as well you know I think he had a similar kind of come from sort of under less privileged background I come from a council estate and sort of built this from scratch really no real leg up and I think he was the same but someone said something which I think really stood out to me he said it's not necessarily um, it's not necessarily copying, it's, it feels familiar and we like it because of that. And I guess that's it. I like the way he puts his story out there, his story. And I'm putting my story, our story out there. And there will be similarities because these, you guys like that format. So why wouldn't I lean into that? It's, um, and 
I think there's a lot of differences between Asheville's story and Epitrade. A lot of, you know, I'd say my construction site is bigger than his. Um, I'd say that uh, Alex and I probably probably own more property than him. I don't know, but what he's talked about. Um, yeah, he's got a massive aggregates and waste management side that we haven't got. But yeah, I've got a few grabs and, you know, we're trying to get into aggregates. But then there's loads of aggregates. In my area alone, there's probably about 30 aggregate companies. Um, so I'm not copying anything. Um, and someone said something about, oh, you know, be original, get your own colours. Black and yellow <laughs> have been my colours since 2009. Black's one of my favourite colours, as you can tell. Probably says a bit about my personality, a bit dull. Um, I, the bl bl and you know, do you know, there's a million companies, DeWalt, you know, there's like black and yellow in construction works. So, you know, I've got so much respect for Daniel and people like him, for Dave from D&J, people that have built businesses from nothing. As you know, I love Dave and Dave's been really accessible. I approached Dave like I've also approached Daniel. Like, the only difference is Dave came back to me. Like the Danes Low boys, top lads, good old boys, as they say. Um, people that are just trying to build a business, probably with less funds than Asheville, and telling the story. You know, it's just this is why we all love YouTube, isn't it? So I hope one day I get to meet Daniel and I will tell him he has been a massive inspiration to me, like a lot of other people. Um, like I know I inspire some people too. I will also tell him that he got me through some dark days. A couple of years ago, as I've talked about, I was in a tough place mentally, you know, took a lot on, some bad deals. I spent so much money doing my house, things like that. And I didn't have much to look forward to, to be honest with you, but that Sunday morning, chilling on my sofa, cup of tea, watching Asheville, and then watching D&J, used to get me through some dark times. I am not joking. So I'd thank him for that. And I would say, like, well done for blazing a trail in this game. And I just show him respect. And if people think that I'm trying to um, imitate him or I'm trying to copy him, probably don't understand that without the Beatles, there wouldn't be a million other bands, Oasis and things like that. I tried to use that example for someone in the comments and they... Uh, it didn't really, uh, didn't really go for it. Uh, who that guy now has actually been really gracious and um, has been really respectful, and I like him. Good sport, but I'm not trying to be the poor man's Ashville. I might look like the poor man's Ashville. He is everything I'm not: tall, dark, handsome, an ex-model, good-looking, got way more trucks than me. Although I'm working on that. Um, but probably what we've got is, is, is what we got in common is we're both ridiculously ambitious and I am ridiculously ambitious and I won't stop I'm not competing with anyone except myself I won't stop until I've got a massive fleet of trucks well I'll know when I'll stop when it stops becoming fun and that's it ultimately we're all here to put food on the table for our families and build something that maybe we can pass on and as I said in last week's episode I'm here just to have fun. The minute this stops becoming fun, and I mean work, YouTube, anything, I'll stop. So yeah, Mr. Daniel Asheville Louise, thank you. Thank you for getting me through a very difficult couple of years. I hope that what I'm putting out now might get a couple of people through difficult times also, just by having a bit of a laugh, showing what we're doing, showing the growth of the company, showing the challenges, the mistakes, and passing on a little bit of wisdom, learning from my mistakes. So yeah, thank you, Daniel. Much love to you.
sunny now that was interesting um, basically we are a bit wet behind the ears when it comes to CNC machines uh, we were when we first got into construction and property to be honest but you learn the knowledge is out there you ask questions and you uh, get the uh, get the knowledge so we were looking at uh, all different types of machines there but the one we want which is a five axis CNC machine which will enable us to do windows stairs doors all inside preferred joinery's factory there is the thick end of about 200 gram plus that but we just looked at it there me and Alex and said well how much would that how much would it cost if we took on extra members of staff to keep up with more workload uh, to, to, to knock it out of the speed and the quality that those machines would and uh, it would be a lot more than uh, having one of them machines and the good thing about machines is they come in on a Monday morning and uh, they don't go on holiday so we know they break down need maintenance but yeah we've run plant and trucks and vans for years so we uh, we know our way around things like that so we're going to do it whether we go with that uh, company there we're not sure yet we're going to look around the market but yeah it's just uh, going to give us so much growth potential um, I was thinking about ideas what was in there about the thought of someone ordering a window or a door or a staircase on some kind of really user-friendly website they click a button they pay at that point there and um, we send it to the factory and it gets made um, that kind of e-commerce for bespoke joinery which I know there is companies out there that do that um, but why can't we have a little piece of the action as I say we're not after taking over the game we just want a piece of the action um, so yeah that was a really interesting visit speaking of Alex he's going to show you around some of our Liverpool projects now because we've got, got a lot going on there as I've said previously and I know a lot of you guys are interested in the profit development side because I always say it I genuinely believe the way to make real wealth in construction is having a profit strategy so let's have a look so we're back in Liverpool I'm with my me man Christian. Uh, you remember in episode six, me and Chris and Christian showed you around this property, uh, and I was at a pre-plaster stage. So we're gonna go inside, have a little look where we're up to now. Because the plastering's done, and we're moving on to second fix. So let's go. Christian. Yes. How have we been getting on, mate? Uh, the plaster has done a good job again, and we started to prep up the second fix stage now. Yeah, it's all looking so, good, isn't it? Yes, yeah, looking good. So, uh, Sparks on the second fix, haven't he? Yes, they done the second fix already. They come back for the final fix now. And then it's all the furniture in and the kitchens in. Yeah, so you'll see there's a little bit of a detail. So we had the soil stack coming down, which is central for the ensuite upstairs. And we had to do a little bit of a return to pick up the one there. So rather than have an ugly boxing in, we've decided to put uh, a boxing right the way across with a small little detail behind which will put an LED strip in it was an idea that our electrician Kevin come up with to be fair and said let's put it in so um, that should look good we'll have a telly in the middle two radiators and a couch just in that section there so yeah so then downstairs uh, obviously that's where we're going to have the tank uh, for all the hot water washing machine tumble dryer inside and there a little bedroom at the back which turned out okay in the end Still drying out on the walls. Need to like a bit of heat in here, don't we? Yeah, heat um, a bit. Try and dry it out a little bit quicker before it goes mouldy. Um, so yeah, and then we'll have a little look upstairs. So upstairs, the boys are doing some roof repair works on the front. So this roof's had a full overhaul. Uh, it's been fully stripped and tiled. Um, but if you can pop out there, you'll see what we're doing on the front bay. So you'll see we started stripping out. Um, the old roof covering that was above this bay so the properties in this area always have an issue here um, where we have loads of water ingress uh, and properties that we've done a few years back you know to, it's a problem that reoccurs every year for us that we have to keep trying to maintain so what we always try and do now is strip it all back clean it all down get it prepared and we GRP the whole bay and right down the valley now um, or the gully just to give us that extra protection rather than using felt like most other people do in the area so as you can see it's coming on nice in here now um, the second fix electrics more or less done um, waiting for the second fix joining to start the plums are starting next week um, all the outside work is starting to happen now the weather's getting better we've got a little bit of rend to the outside which Christian's going to jump on next week as well um, so it should be coming on quite quick quite soon so we'll keep you updated on this property as we, we progress <laughs>
walking around to the next job now um, to give you a showcase of that one. Um, as I say, it's at an earlier stage in that one, so you can see what it looks like as we start to rebuild them back up again. Because all the inside of the property is ripped out fully. All the floors get taken out and new ones get put back in at a lower level. Um, just to give us that extra headroom in the loft. That's the main reason why we do it, to be fair. In this area now, you, it's that hard to build dorms, you need planning because it's a conservation area. And you, you, you're never really going to get it. Um, we've had a couple of little battles to try and win dormers over over the years, and uh, it's just never ever come in our favour. So on this job now, um, it's making good steam. The foundation work has been getting investigated, so we'll show you a little story about what we've had to do to try and save a little bit of cost on that. So here's the job coming up now. We've actually got a few properties on this road now, which makes it easy in the summer period when all the students move out and we're doing our maintenance because we can just dot in between um, and it's just you know logistically it's it's easy to move the teams around so as you can see uh, all the floors are in nice low height like two three height we go for ground floor has been fully replaced we didn't actually have to drop this ground floor in this property um, because there's enough height in the loft off the palings which is what we mark down from and work our heights off uh, so it just went back in the same level you can see off the existing slab in a minute that's the same but we still membraned all the way around just to future proof the property uh, there wasn't really any damp anyway it's just that you know we just do it just in case you do normally tend to get it on the bay there in the little corner over there in these properties but um you know we just wrap it right the way around but we're done now aren't we so in uh, yes the new floor get that done basement being cleaned out yeah uh, ventilation getting ready for the under floor. You've done the uh, underground drainage, haven't you? Underground drainage. Uh, been upgraded the inspection chamber for 6 inch. Okay, yeah. Because that's a new thing we're doing yeah, now. That's so, a new thing now again. Um, we used to just run 4 inch right through to the, the chamber, but we've started making it into a 6, uh, six inch six chamber inch right now. through now. Yeah. Uh, this is the second one we've done it on, and it just adds a little bit more uh, ease so when things do get flushed, if there's 6 people using all the toilets at once, bang, it'll go a lot easier, uh, less problems in the future again, try and minimise maintenance. And also typic six tenant want to use the same time the toilet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you have to go and fix it don't you? <laughs> so yeah when we have maintenance issues, um, Christine's the man to fix them because he's built the houses, he knows where things are, he directs people where to go in the right place and we fix them quite quickly. But uh, all the stairs have been measured for you now, our boys and prefer joining are going to be building them for us, so we'll showcase that for you. Um, and it's basically a straight and a wind, uh, a double wind up into the loft, and then we've got a, 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 just a normal straight going down into the basement. So three sets on this property. Um, so outside, we've been getting ready to do the foundational work. Um, and on this section of Kenny Fields, the ground isn't the best. Um, the property that we've just been in, then to show you uh, the plastering bits. Um, now when we've done some trial holes to see what the ground's like and Christian will tell us a little bit more now about what's been going on there. So we get again the 600 buckets and we already uh, 800 deep at the minute. So after 800 we done the test holes which is going to be extra 300. So we already on minus one meter, one ten and we started to do some pressure test. Mm -hmm. The pressure test is mean about just grab something and just try to push it down with your weight. Mm. i show you once now. <sighs> so when you're going to test horse, ready. Stick it down something and just on your weight, just keep pushing it. Which is, you see, my weight's probably 80 kg and just still goes. So, we could, so be we could be going well past the meter deep there, couldn't we, digging? So Yes. From a cost point of view, from us and the safety point of view, digging down that far to then try and shore up the sides to pour the, the strip foundation, it's just not worth it. So when we get to this stage now, rather than carry on any further, we get our boys in from Rhino Piling to come and assess the job, give us a price and um, and let them take over and then they'll do all the piles and pour all the concrete. Obviously it's a bit more expensive than doing traditional foundations but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and you know, we've got to work with the ground we've got, haven't we? Yes, uh, also the new things coming up again. They want one of the pile inside the building now. Okay, yeah, you know. Uh, I already booked today the rain piling. They're coming three o'clock to look at it, the job. Today, yeah, today. good, sound. 
So we probably get that on on go next week, then, won't we? Yes. Because uh, once that's in, we can start getting ready to build up. Then we we'll build up, do the knock through, um, and carry on working inside on the first fix. So inside, all we've got to do inside now is get the stairs fitted, fit out for the stud work, and then we're on to first fix M and E uh, again, which we'll bring to the channel for you. So it'll probably be good to show you what's going to happen in this one. So the other properties that you've seen, um, the living room communal areas at the front, so the bedroom at the back. On this one, we're going to do what we normally do, which is having the bedroom at the front. Uh, and the communal living space at the back with us having a basement. With us having a basement, it enables us to put the boiler and all the tank and all stuff down there because uh, it's you know it's more or less a wasted space. And rather than putting it up into a room somewhere else where we can keep the space, we'll, we'll stick it down there. So in this front section, it's going to be the bedroom with the ensuite here. The soil stack themselves will be there, which will run straight away up the property. And all the other ensuites are linking to that other one. Then the only one ensuite that doesn't. The bedroom too which will go outside itself into the stack um, and that way then we can have a service void which runs right up the building and put all our ventilation in uh, all the ductwork all the cables pipes everything gets run up the back then it's an easy access for them and the lads to get their bits in and then you'll have the stairs coming up the door into which will be our communal area that back wall will be gone straight into our single story rear extension um, we'll have a couch which will be situated along the wall telly on the wall here where against the, the back of the stairs um, the new back door will be put in here this window will be taken out and reduced to a smaller size and then our kitchen will flow all the way around and um, we'll have a bit of a table coming out there that Christy and I make out of concrete which is our little traditional thing that we do um, and you'll have a door just behind the seating uh, going down into the basement um, so it'll be good once this stud works in for you to see what it looks like, um, which is what I've just explained then. Uh, and then upstairs, as I say, the bedrooms will all be in the same position as the other property. Uh, it's just the downstairs that's different on this one. So I've had to come in KTM's office for a bit of quiet time. Because we've basically outgrown this unit, it's uh, chaos when people are coming in. We sort of hot desk. I have got my own desk in my own office, but at the moment KTM's using it and I'll just leave them to it. So coming here for a little bit of quiet, it's uh, it's such a powerful thing, owning property. I can't say it enough, right? If you are a builder or you're a tradesman or whatever, you need to be owning property. Property is what gets the rich, rich, and it's what gives you a long-term um, chance of any kind of retirement. I don't know about you, I have not got a pension, not really. All I've got are my businesses and my properties. Um, and you know, in 10 years time, when I'm 28, it might give me uh, an option to retire or at least take a step back from the business. So I implore you, if you're thinking about it, do it. As tradesmen, as builders, as whatever, we make other people money from property. So why shouldn't we have a little bit of that action ourselves? That's all I can say. Don't, you know, just don't hesitate. If you need any advice, any help with finance, or if you want us to look at, help you look at a deal, reach out to me and Alex. Follow our property page, which is at emperor underscore property. A load of our student stuff's on there, and we've got big plans for that. So Dale's just come back from road testing this now. Dale, does it work? Does it get into gear? Yeah. Yeah. It's all spawn, it? yeah, drives normal now. Did it take you as long as you thought it would? Or uh, probably just shy of why. Didn't what you get I sent am. the wrong clutch as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you've done well there. So yeah, we're learning because obviously we don't always know how long things are gonna take, but Dale's got a lot of experience so he can sort of uh, help me out when we're pricing jobs and stuff. But it's amazing. This came in, we've got pushed in and now it's driving out. Happy days. So I'm sat on the Navarra project and it's been wrapped. Oh baby, it looks unreal. But you'll have to come back on Wednesday for the full unveiling. Few bits to do, Dale's uh, working ferociously to get it ready, but it looks incredible. You would not believe that this is what, nearly 20 years old or something. So that is it for this week at Every Trade. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe also like this video it really helps like i keep saying i'm not too proud to beg see you on wednesday click here for the last week's episode click here and here for other episodes you really should have seen before and click here to subscribe to the channel Woo! my man <laughs>